Welcome back to our Agriculture and the Environment class. Today, we'll be looking at planting in our containers. My name is Okimo Duki. Today, we'll be looking at the steps necessary for establishing and maintaining a container garden, the tools and materials to establish and maintain a container garden, demonstrate the ability to work as part of a team, follow the instructions in carrying out steps necessary to establish and maintain a container garden, and five, to evaluate the success in establishing and maintaining a container garden based on the quality of plants produced. Now, the glory of gardening, hands in the dirt, head in the sun, art with nature, to nurture a garden is to feed not just the body, but to feed the soul. Alfred Austin. Let us look at our common planting materials. We have our tubers, for example, yam, rhizome, we have our ginger, our suckers, we have banana, vine cuttings, our sweet potato, stem cuttings, we have our ornamentals and callaloo, we have our seeds and we have our seedlings. Steps in establishing a garden. The first thing you need to do, students, is to design your garden. So we want to know whether or not it's going to be a horizontal garden, or it's going to be a vertical garden, it's going to be a diagonal garden, or it's going to be a mixed garden. We want to list all the tasks and tools that are needed. So step by step, the things that you will be doing and all the tools that you will need. You're going to prepare all your planting materials. You're going to prepare your seedlings, your seeds, your suckers, your vine cuttings, whatever you're going to use to plant, you're going to create them. Then we're going to create our garden. We're going to plant our seedlings, we're going to plant our suckers, we're going to plant our vine cuttings. Then we must irrigate our garden because plants need water to survive. It is important in the process of photosynthesis, therefore water must be present for plants. Then we are going to provide nutrients for the plants. So we are going to fertilize our plants. We have our man-made fertilizer. We have also our natural fertilizer, such as our manure. Then we are going to, while the plant is growing, we are going to check for pests. We need to ensure that the plants are pest-free or they have minimal pest damage on them. And then, Happy time, we're going to harvest and consume. Terms to know, seedling. This is a young plant normally developed from a germinated seed. Hardening off. This is the process of gradually acclimatizing plants to the outdoor conditions or wherever you're going to have your plant. Transplanting. This is the technique of moving a plant from one location to another, normally to its final destination. Irrigating. This is the process of providing water or moisture to the plant and soil. Fertilizer application. This is physically or manually providing nutrients to the plants. Harvesting. I know that everybody is always excited about this time. It's to pick or collect crops ready or almost ready for consumption. Let's go right into planting using seedlings. This activity is normally done late afternoon into the evening or very early in the morning. My preference is really late in the afternoon or evening. This will give the plant enough time to absorb moisture and give it enough time to become acclimatized to the environment before we have it in the direct sun. So let's go. This is Yanara and she is nine years old and today she will be helping us in 
establishing our container garden. Now, our first step is to fill our container three quarters way up. Now, Yanara, you're going to assist me in filling our container. So, remember, this is our hand spade, and we're going to fill our container, this container, three quarters way up. Very good. Very good. We're almost there, right? Very good. We are ready now to plant our seedlings. Now we need to moisten our seedlings before we plant. Now today we have with us, we have a mixed tree. So we have tomatoes, we have cauliflower, we have broccoli, we have lettuce, we have sweet pepper. So what we are going to do in our Pot today, we're going to moisten our seedlings. So you can use a spray bottle, a spray pan, or just a normal bottle to moisten your seedlings. So this is done so that you can easily remove your seedlings and also get your seedlings prepared for planting. So, what we're going to do, we're going to remove one of our tomato seedlings. So, we're going to look at a very healthy one. Let us take this one. All right, remember in our last lesson when we spoke about the seedlings being root-bounded? Now, this is an example because right now the plant is almost in a dormant state because it is fully wrapped around the soil. So what you really want is just to release the roots a little. So you just pull on them a little so that you, you're stimulating um, growth again, right? In this case, we have one, two, three seedlings. So we have one that is definitely ready to be planted. We have one that is not too bad, and we have one that is very small. So we can, uh, we can decide. We will definitely remove the very, very small one. So we'll remove the small one. We'll put it down. We'll not use that one. So we can decide whether or not to use both plants, or we can separate, which may cause some root damage, but sometimes it is a, a risk worth taking. Or we can remove and discard the smaller plant. So what we're going to do today, we're going to just remove the smaller plant and for one plant to be in there. So we'll just remove the smaller plant. We'll place it down because it can be used again. So Yanara, you're going to help me now to plant our seedling. So. Because our container is three quarters way up, we can just place our seedlings there in the center. So we're going to make a small indent, about two to three inches. So they're now right in the center, right? So we can use our hand or we can use our hand spade to create that indent. So we're going to place our seedling. So Yanara, place your seedling in the center, be careful. Right, cover it. Right, in the center. And then, we're going to add some soil to the seedling. Very 
Very good. After planting, what do you think we need to do? What do you think? We need to? Water. So we need to water or moisten our plant. So we will use our spray bottle to water our plant. Ensure that it gets enough water, but not too much water. All right, I think that is enough. So, what we will do as the plant grow, we'll continue to add soil to the plant. So, right now it is just a little bit above three quarter. We will add soil as the plant grows, right? Now, depending on the type of, type of tomato, you may need to add some support to it. So you can either what they call stake or you can use trellising system to support the plant. You can place a stick beside the pot or inside the pot um, to support the growth of the plant. Because what will happen is that once the tomato plant gets big, it will start to topple over. All right? So... For our tomato plant, we use a nice fancy container. We bought this at the store. But remember students, you can use any container at your home. You can use your bucket, you can use your flower pots, you can use your trays, anything at home, plastic bottles, anything at home that can hold, you think can hold a plant. Remember, as I said to you before, that try, try, experiment. Find new ways, do things, right? So Yanara, do you think we can use an empty coconut shell to plant a crop? Maybe. I can't believe it till I see it. All right. So you want us to try? Yes. Let us experiment. So the first thing we're going to do, so if you notice, it is empty. We have... No water in there, so we are going to fill it with dirt. Right, some soil. Soil. Right. So before we fill it with soil, let us put some gravel in there, some stones. Now the stones will help with the drainage and to ensure that the plants are not waterlogged. So we don't want the roots to rot. So we're going to place some stones in there. Then we're going to put some soil. Right. Good job. What are we going to plant? All right, let us take our escalion root and you can plant. This, is, this would be excellent for your coconut shell. So if you notice here, we have Yanara, we have roots developing. So what we're going to do is to put our escalion in or a coconut. So you know, place it down and put a little more soil in there. Place it around it. Very good. So what is next? What do you think we need to do next? Water it. We need to water, water. it. So we're going to moisten it. Excellent, excellent. Do you think it will grow? I don't know. I don't know if it will grow. But as I said, can't believe it till I see it. All right, so in another couple of weeks, we will see if the scallion is now a full plant. So, Yanara, we're going to try our time. Time? Yes, that we use when we're cooking our rice and peas and our curry chicken. Right? So let's go. All right, we already placed the, the stones. Right. Wood. Now we're going to put the soil. Why do you put the stones in the coconut without, instead of just put place the soil? Well, we are trying, Yanara, to create as real as possible a soil profile. So the, the gravel, the stones, assist in drainage so remember the coconut we don't have any holes underneath 
So we don't want the soil to be too saturated, too filled with water. So instead, the water, the excess water will drain to the gravel. And what it will do is that it will encourage the roots of the plant to grow towards it and make the plant really big. Okay? Right. All right. So let us then plant our thyme. Now we're going to place it in carefully. Carefully. May need a little bit more soil, soil, Yanara. So let's put in the soil first. A little bit more soil. Yes. All right. A little bit more. All right. Very good. So we're going to put our time here. We're going to cover it. Cover the roots. With more soil. Right. Very good. Then what we do? Then we water it. All right. Very good. All right, I think that's enough. So we will allow our time to stay in our container until it reaches maturity. Boys and girls, once the time reaches maturity, we can always remove parts of it and stick it into another container. And what you'll have, you'll have new plants growing. Now that is called a sexual reproduction because you're using a part of the plant to create another plant that is like the parent plant. All right, Yanara, didn't, did you remember that you were unsure that our escalion plant would grow in our coconut? Yes. Now look here. This is our plant after a couple of weeks. Wow. Wonderful, right? All right. So you believe now? Yes. All right. With your containers, you won't have to be going to the market as often as you would. So we'll now move on to applying our fertilizer. We have two main types of fertilizer that we use. We have our man-made fertilizer, and we also have our natural fertilizer. Our natural fertilizer is like our manure coming from your poultry house or your goat pen or from your cattle. Also, it can come from your compost. So I know a lot of you, when you use your organic material, you place them in a compost. And over time, that breaks down into good, good material for our plants. Now, what we'll be looking at today is our man-made fertilizer. Now, plants need three major, what you call, macronutrients. These nutrients are needed for plants to grow. There are other nutrients that are needed, but the macronutrients are needed in the largest portion. In our man-made fertilizer, we have nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. N, P, K. So the N, which stands for nitrogen, the P stands for phosphorus, and the K stands for potassium. Now these are all found in your periodic table and these are all elements that are found around us. N meaning nitrogen, this is responsible for your leaf growth. So if you have your cabbage and your callaloo and your pak choy, cauliflower and so on, you want a fertilizer that is high nitrogen. You have your phosphorus, which is your P. This is responsible for your root growth. If you have like your root crops, like your sweet potato and your carrots and so on, you need something that is high in phosphorus. Also, we have our potassium, which is the K, which is responsible for fruit growth. Like your tomatoes, your sweet peppers, those you need a lot of potassium. So for example, 
I have with me a 1428 14 fertilizer, meaning it has 14 parts nitrogen, 28 parts phosphorus, and 14 parts potassium. What do you think we are, we are going to use this fertilizer for? Remember, 14 parts nitrogen, 28 parts phosphorus, 14 parts potassium. We have nitrogen being responsible for leaf, phosphorus being responsible for root, and potassium being responsible for fruit. So we have 14 being for nitrogen, which is responsible for leaf, 28 for phosphorus, which is responsible for root, and we have our potassium, which is 14, which is responsible for fruit. So think about it. Yes, you are correct. It is phosphorus which is needed in its largest portion. Therefore, it will influence or affect our root crops more. So like your sweet potato or your carrots. So boys and girls, we are going to show you now how to apply our NPK fertilizer. So let us get our ginger plant. You notice we have a bucket that we have our ginger plant pretty wide because our ginger plant will grow nicely sideways. Now we are going to apply our NPK fertilizer. Students, be careful. Ensure that you do not touch the fertilizer with your bare hands. If you touch them with your bare hands, ensure that it is washed thoroughly afterwards. Reason being, it is made up of various chemicals and it may burn your skin or it may cause damage if inhaled or ingested. So we want to ensure that we use some form of tool while we are handling our fertilizer. What would be nice if you put on a pair of gloves and you use your hand speed. All right, some persons, they will cut open a bottle and use the bottle to pour the fertilizer. Now, as I said to you before, the fertilizer may, may be harmful if it is not used properly. So we have to ensure that we place the fertilizer in such a way that it benefits the plant and not harm the plant. So let us go. Now we're going to look at the canopy of the plant, which is the tip of the leaves, and we're going to use that as our guide. Normally, anywhere that the tip extends to, that is where your root extends to. So we're going to create a small channel around the plant. So let us go, we're creating a small channel, Yanara, you noticing? Yes. So we're creating a small channel, enough so that the fertilizer can go there. So we're going to take a little fertilizer, or NPK, and we're going to sprinkle it lightly around the plant. Ensure that the fertilizer is not touching the plant and it is not too close. Then we're going to cover the fertilizer. Why we cover the fertilizer? We do not want the plant to get damaged or burned. So we have to ensure that we cover it so there is no release of any toxic gas on the leaves of the plants. We call it in farming volatilization, whereby the fertilizer itself turns into gas and may damage the plant and you may lose some of the fertilizer. So we cover the fertilizer and what do you think we need to do next? We need to do what? We need to know water our fertilizer. Why do you think we need to water the fertilizer? Think about it. Can the fertilizer be absorbed in this form, in a solid form? Do you think that the roots can absorb the fertilizer this way? No, can't. So, it is important that the fertilizer is 
appropriately watered, it is appropriately moistened so that this solid can now turn into a liquid. In the liquid form, that is how the plant will then absorb the fertilizer and then it is readily available. So we're going to water the, our, our fertilizer, we're going to moisten our fertilizer while moistening our plant. Remember, this can't be done one time. It has to be done on a regular basis. So what I propose is that at least one time for the day, you go and you water your fertilizer. Ensure that it is wet thoroughly. Take into, into consideration that you don't want to waterlog the soil, but to wet it thoroughly. All right, and I think that is enough. So what will happen now is that our fertilizer will then start to change into a liquid form. And then the plant, the plant roots can then absorb the nutrients that are found in the fertilizer. And what you'll see happening is that these leaves, you'll see them start growing really nice, really lovely. Eventually, when it's time to reap, you will see some nice, nice ginger, nice sized ginger coming out, right? So that is applying our fertilizer. Now, if you really don't have the time to go every day and water it, what you can do is use a plastic bottle and create your own irrigation system. So I have a simple water bottle here that I'm going to use to create um, an irrigation system for my plants. So we're going to bowl, bore some small holes in our water bottle. Why do why you think you don't want the holes to be large? Because, yes, because you don't want the water to run out all at once. So what you want is enough water reaching the plants at a given time. So you don't want too much water being given to the plant because the plant can only use a small amount at a time. So before we create our simple irrigation system, we want to thank Yanara very much for sharing with us. Thank you, Yanara. You have been wonderful. Say bye. Bye. All right. So. Let us use our bottle. So we have poured some water in our bottle and we're going to use a thumbtack or any pointed device we can find to bore our water bottle. So we're going to bore. So if you notice, we're going to bore small holes in our water bottle. It can be three, four, five, or it can just be one depending on the size of the hole. And then, what we can do is just place our bottle at the root. And what will eventually happen is that water will just be released in, onto our plants. So this can be done for all your plants. So we have this for our ginger. We can do it for our rosemary. So for each plant, you have a bottle and you go periodically and to check to see if water is there. You can do it and you can leave it. So for example, if I'm going to visit Uncle Valentine for the weekend and you want to, um, you don't have anybody to water your plant, you can use bottles to, um, to create your irrigation system. So you know that when you come back, you will have nice fresh plants that are properly watered, especially if they start to mature, they will need more and more water. Until next time, plant, plant, plant. Try different things, experiment, make mistakes, and try again. Until next time, see you again.